Hi, welcome to my video where today we are talking about another algebra introductory topic, which is all about the order of operations. Um, when we are su simplifying expressions, when we're simplifying algebraic expressions and we are using the order of operations, we have to do things in a very particular order. If we don't follow things in a particular order, we can and we will most of the time get completely different wrong results. So order is incredibly important. I'm going to guide you through today um, the basics. We're going to talk about a problem that's already done and then we're going to do three problems together. We're also going to evaluate expressions as well by substituting in values and then doing our order of operations. So I have quite a few problems for us. Stick with me on this. Feel free to write things down along with me. Do the problems on a piece of paper or a dry erase board. And I hope we do really, really well. Okay, so first step in solving problems using the order of operations is to simplify anything that's inside of our parentheses or our grouping symbols. So parentheses could be our curves that look like this. You could also have another set of parentheses, another kind of grouping symbol called brackets. Those look like the half rectangles. You can also have braces, those curves, points, and then curves. So those are our grouping symbols, and we want to take care of all of those first. Anything that's in that first, that's our first goal. There's something to simplify. Once that's done, we then need to simplify any of our exponents or our powers. Okay, so anything raised to the second power, third power, fifth power, whatever it may be. Once we're done with simplifying everything in our grouping symbols, simplifying all of our exponents, then we're going to move on to doing any multiplication and division in the order it's shown from left, left to right, okay? Anything in order. So if division comes first, that's what we do first. If multiplication comes first, that's what we do first. But we do any multiplying and dividing in order from left to right. Then the last thing we do is any addition and subtraction in order from left to right. So it doesn't matter what the order is. It doesn't matter if you're subtracting first or adding first. Whatever you see, it's like first come, first serve. That's what we take care of in that order. So it's everything in our grouping symbols, all of our exponents or powers, multiplying and dividing from left to right, and then adding and subtracting from left to right. Let's take a look. Here's our first problem. So this first problem is already done for us. The example's already there. And I have my steps here just to kind of guide us and remind us. Here it says, step one, evaluate expressions inside parentheses or grouping symbols. So I'm going to put a little dot here. This is what the original line of the problem looked like. 7 minus 4 times 3 plus 2 squared plus 10 divided by 2. I have to evaluate anything inside of my parentheses first. So here I notice I have one set of parentheses. 3 plus 2 ends up becoming 5. So notice, the only thing that was done from the original problem to the first line of work was I did my parentheses. I simplified what was there. Now, even though I have parentheses here, they really don't have an expression inside the parentheses to simplify. They now mean more of, here's an exponent here I'm multiplying. So we're done with those grouping symbols. Step 2, evaluate all of the exponents or powers. I notice I only have one exponent. It's 5 to the second. Now, something really incredible and important to make sure we make note of is notice I'm not doing 4 times 5 and then squaring it. This exponent of 2 only goes to that 5. It has nothing to do with the 4. 5 squared is this 25. So notice that's what was taken care of. Everything else was brought down. Just 5 squared was done. Now, step 3. Evaluate all multiplying and dividing in order from left to right. So, excuse me. The first thing I see is I have 4 times 25. 4 times 25 gives me that 100. Notice everything else got brought down. Now from left to right, I only have division. 10 divided by 2 is that 5. Last step. Do adding and subtracting in order from left to right. So here doesn't matter what comes first. It's just whatever you see first for adding and subtracting, you do. 7 minus this 100 is negative 93. And then my last step, I have this adding, and I get this negative 88. 
Now, if I had done things a little bit out of order, you better believe I would have a really different answer. I mean, look at the top here. Imagine I did seven minus four. It's three. Notice I never did that step. And then three plus two is five, right? Five squared is 25. Three times 25, that would have just given me immediately a 75. Notice I don't have 75 in any of my lines of work. And then what if I did 10 divided by two and I had five? Look at what I would have gotten here. Three times 25 is 75. 75 plus five is 80. Definitely don't have that as an answer. Imagine you did this and then you even did it really out of order. And you did 25 plus five, which is 30. 30 times three is 90. Again, still not that same answer. So the order really, really matters. And we have to make sure we follow these steps. Okay, let's take a look at these problems here. So step one, evaluate anything inside parentheses. Now notice I have two sets of grouping symbols. I have parentheses within brackets. You always work from the inside out. So I'm going to keep this 48 over 2 cubed times 3 plus 5 times 4 minus, and I'm going to simplify what's here, which is 2. That's all I've done for a step. Second step, I still have parentheses. You exhaust it until you're done with it. So I still have parentheses to simplify. So this is 48 over 2 cubed times 3 plus 5 times 4 minus 2 is 2. All right. So, so far, I simplified anything that was in my grouping symbols. Next step, after parentheses or grouping symbols are exponents. So I have one set of exponents, 48 over 2 cubed. Now remember, 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2. That's 2 cubed. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So it's 48 over 8 times 3 plus 5 times 2. Are you with me? Okay, parentheses, done. Exponents, done. Now we have to multiply in order from left to right. We can't just skip around to do whatever we want. Okay, so from left to right, the first thing I have is division. 48 divided by 8 is 6. So now this becomes 6. So this is what I'm doing. 6 times 3 plus 5 times 2. I still have to do my multiplication and division from left to right. So I'm doing 6 times 3 is 18. So this becomes 18 plus 5 times 2. Still, I have multiplication going on. I take care of that. This becomes 18 plus 10, which ends up with our result of 28. A little sloppy, but you get the point. Order matters so much. So notice, I took care of my parentheses first. Then I started with my multiplying and dividing in order from left to right. So I did my division first because that's what just showed up first. Then I did my multiplying. And then after my multiplying was done, I finally did my adding. Next problem. 2 to the 5th minus 6 times 2 over 3 cubed minus 5 times 3 minus 2. Now the deal here is when you're dealing with simplifying a fraction, we want to take care of the numerator by itself, get that completely simplified. Take care of the denominator by itself, get that completely simplified. And then last step, simplify my numerator over denominator. Step one, simplifying any parentheses or grouping symbols. Now I see two sets of parentheses here, but notice there's no expression inside of them. These parentheses are actually there just for multiplication reasons. So parentheses, grouping symbols, done. Number two, exponents. I have two sets of exponents. Now, the numerator is completely separate from the denominator. So I'm actually going to take care of those at the same exact time. So I'm going to set up my fraction bar here. Now, 2 to the fifth means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Two times two. 2 times 2 is 4. Another 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16 times that other 2 would be 32. So 2 to the fifth is 32, and then minus 6 times 2. Now my denominator, 3 to the third. That means 3 
times three times three. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. So this really becomes 27 minus five times three minus two. Now, parentheses, done. Exponents, done. Now we multiply and divide in order from left to right. So when I'm looking at this, this is really, really important. We do not do 32 minus six. What we have to do is this six times two first. So this is what has to get taken care of. Same thing in my denominator. This is what I need to multiply. So this now becomes 32 minus 12 over 27 minus 15 minus two. So notice I did my multiplying, I did my multiplying. Now, I do addition and subtraction in order from left to right. My numerator is just 20. My denominator, you do addition and subtraction in order from left to right. So 25 minus 15 is 12. And then I still have that minus two. 12 minus two is 10. And 20 divided by 10 is 2. So this expression here actually got simplified all the way to just 2. Last problem like this. Ready? First step, any grouping symbols? So we have parentheses here. We need to simplify that. So this is now 10 minus 2 plus 2 cubed. Make sure you keep those parentheses because notice you have that exponent there. Divided by 4 times 3. So parentheses, done. Step two, exponents. I've got this two to the third. Two times two times two is eight. So this now is 10 minus two plus eight divided by four times three. Okay, parentheses, done. Exponents, done. Now we have to multiply and divide in order from left to right. So the first thing that I see multiplying or dividing from left to right is this eight divided by four. So this now becomes 10 minus two plus two times three. Now I still have multiplying two times three. So this is 10 minus two plus six. Last step, add, add and subtract in order from left to right. So the first thing I see is 10 minus 2, which is 8, plus 6, which gives me 14. I would have gotten a very, very different answer if I had done things out of order. Okay, last couple problems I want to show you, and I know my screen is kind of dark here at this point. It's kind of like a dark gray. It's just how my notebook scanned when I put it in. It says, evaluate each expression if A is equal to 12, B is equal to 9, and C is equal to 4. What I would do here in these cases, if I gave you these expressions and I gave you the values for A, B, and C, is your job is to simply substitute the values in for A, B, and C, and then use our order of operations to simplify it out. So if you wanted to pause right now to plug those numbers in and give it a shot, you certainly can. Otherwise, continue along with me. So if I plug in my value for A, my A is 12. So this is going to be 12 squared plus my B value is 9 minus 4 squared. 12 squared is 144. 4 squared over here is 16. And then I'd have to do my order for operations from left to right, adding and subtracting. 144 plus 9 is 153. And then 153 minus 16 is 137. Same thing here, 2 times C. So that's going to be 2 times 4. And in parentheses, A plus B. So 12 plus 9. I need to do my order of operations. So I clean up what's in my parentheses. 12 plus 9 is 21. And now I've got three values being multiplied. I just multiply them straight across in order. 2 times 4 is 8. And then 8 times 21 is 168. Pretty simple. Next two. So I know you can't see the values on your screen anymore, but A was 12, B was 9, and C is 4. So if I substitute these values in, this becomes 12 squared 
divided by 4 times 9 within the parentheses, within these brackets, and then plus 4. First thing I have to take care of is the most inner parentheses. So this 4 times 9 becomes 36. 12 squared, I did simplify here to get 144, just because it doesn't have anything to do with that right now. It doesn't affect it, but you could certainly do them in separate steps. 144 divided by 36, so I have to still clean up what's in my brackets, is 4. And then 4 plus 4 is simply 8. Okay, c squared times 2b minus a. So this really becomes 4 squared times 2 times 9 minus 12. Now, something we can start to do, and I did it in that previous problem there, is I can start to simplify things that have nothing to do with each other. For example, this 4 squared is 16. That has no effect on 2 times 9 being 18. So technically, as long as you start to feel comfortable with this, you can simplify them at the same time. Again, because they have nothing to do with each other right now. So 16 times 18 minus 12. I do need to do 18 minus 12 is 6. And then 16 times 6 is 96. Fractions. Let's take a look. So if I substitute my values in, and these are my last couple problems for us today for order of operations. If I substitute my values in, this is what it becomes. I'm just going to extend my screen here. 9 times my b. c squared is 4. Notice I put a raised dot there. I don't want it to look like 94 plus 12 divided by 4. So first thing, parentheses. I don't have any, but I do have exponents. Second step, 4 squared is 16. So this becomes 9 times 16 plus 12 divided by 4. Remember, we clean up the numerator, and then we divide it by the denominator. So now I need to do 9 times 16, 144, plus 12, and then divide that by 4. 144 plus 12 is 156. 156 divided by 4 is 39. Next one. This would become 9 squared minus 2 times 4 squared over 12 plus 4 minus 9. First step, simplify parentheses. I don't have any expressions inside my parentheses. Exponents. I've got two sets of exponents, and I can take care of those at the same time. 9 squared is 81. 4 squared is 16. Now, here's my denominator. If I wanted to, since my denominator has nothing to do with my numerator, I could start to clean it up. 12 plus 4, remember do addition and subtraction in order from left to right, is 16. Now, my numerator. What do I do first? 81 minus 2 or 2 times 16? If you said 2 times 16, you're right. This is really 81 minus 32 over 7, cleaning up that denominator, 81 minus 32 is 49. 49 divided by that 7 is 7. I hope this video was helpful for you as you're navigating through order of operations. Check out my other videos here on YouTube for all the math help that you need.